good to be with you. I want to share with you some thoughts that I believe you're going to find interested uh, in. Uh, we're, we're dealing with signs and wonders. Um, this is my weekend session, and I hope that you um, will support this um, series of messages that I'm putting out and let people know and subscribe, if you would, especially to YouTube, to um, my channel there. Um, when we're looking at what's going on in the situation in the world, there's a lot of people with a lot of different um, theories, uh, a lot of different thoughts. There's a lot of different things that are happening. And because of that, uh, we're, we're dealing with, a, with a, a time in which we're more um, worried and concerned about the information coming in um, from news cycles, from the posts that people bring, and instead of what God's word has to say. Um, we, we have a tendency to say, well, you know, the Lord tells us that everything, you know, just have faith. We're going to go through times like this and it's going to be okay. Um, we're going to have wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be days of um, hardship. There's going to be, you know, earthquakes and, and different various places. And we're living in the last days and we, we can expect everything that's going on. But when we get into the specifics of what's happening today, I think that it's very important, and what I've shared with you in the past, uh, last year, and I've not said a whole lot about this, matter of fact, is the shakings that are going on. And this all goes back to Hebrews chapter 12, and, it's, and, and it goes right along, and there's parallels Haggai chapter 2, that God's going to shake up the world uh, one more time. And, you know, the last time he shook up everything was in Egypt. And when the plagues came, but he said, this next time I do it, I'm going to shake up not only the, the earth, but the heavens as well, heaven and earth. Why? Because the church is here. We are God's heavenly people. And we must understand something here, that Peter tells us that the judgment of the Lord begins first in the house of God. So judgment first begins with us. And this is the shaking that's going on, that God is going to shake everything loose that can be shaken. He's ridding the, the dross out of the church. He's getting us to the place where we are going to let loose of everything and hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in light of me saying all of that, um, when I think about our friends in Ukraine, Canada, and all over the world, Australia, wherever you might be in, here in America, uh, we've got so much to pray for. And so I've got some wonderful friends in every one of these places. And so, you know, it's, it's, um, it, 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 when it touches your heart, when you know there's somebody, for instance, I got a message from the Ukraine from a young lady that worked for me that is just as wonderful as can be and asked for prayer and support. And I want you to do that. I want you to be praying for the people of Ukraine. But when what we're doing now, we're living in a time when we're really going to have to get our eyes on the Lord. And you know that. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know. But I do want to share some references in the Word of God is because that's what signs and wonders are all about, uh, principles, patterns, and prophecies. And what we need to understand in the Word of God, and we've got to get back to the supernatural. And that's why I talk about the signs and wonders, and I get all this from Acts chapter 2, where he said there would be wonders in the heavens and signs on the earth. This is going to be the, this is what you're going to deal with in the, in the last days. And, and the last days have been for a long time now. And now we're coming to the end of the last days. Um, we're starting to wind things down. No one knows how long that might be. But when we deal with it, we've got to understand the church is a supernatural body. We are the body of Christ. He is the mind. We are the body. And we need to operate underneath him. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords and the head of the church. So he's given us his word, the logos. Jesus is the word of God. And within the word of God, he's given us the Holy Spirit. And we found that in Acts chapter 2, as the Holy Spirit came into this, you know, poured out into this world. And it's here. And we live in this age of grace. And because of that, we now have this word, not only the word as logos, God's eternal word, but we also have this word called uh, rhema, which is God's revealed word for the moment, for the time. 
In other words, it, it deals with it in Romans chapter, I think it's Romans chapter 10, where he says, how are we going to um, come by faith, but by the word? And the word there is not logos. It's not the same word that describes Jesus in John 1.1. 1, 1. It's rhema. It's the revealed word. In other words, when the Holy Spirit convicts us, when the re revelation of God hits us, when we read the written word, and that's when you know you have this wonderful experience with God, a personal, intimate relationship. So we're dealing with some things now that you need to understand that not only when you come to faith, do you hear God's revealing to you that this is real, but we find that all down through history as God reveals himself to us as we walk with him personally. And so God tells us in Acts chapter 2 that he's going to um, young people will have visions and older people will have dreams. And it's amazing that the church has thrown those things out as though um, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the day. And we don't believe in the supernatural. And we say, oh, that's just a dream. And it's like, no, God speaks in parables. And so sometimes God tells us information. And, and he says in, in the book of Proverbs, I, you know, it's for kings to search things out. And God's called us to be kings and priests unto the Lord, a kingdom of priests. So we've got to come to this understanding and realization that God is speaking to us very loud supernaturally, but the church has been asleep. And that's what the church of Laodicea is all about. It's the last church of the seven found in Revelation 2 and 3. It's God's last word to us. But before we get to Laodicea, there's this church called the Church of Philadelphia. And it is a church of brotherly love. Um, and it's interesting that what my message for you today is the fact that in the last year, there's been all this information coming about twos. Why are the two, 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 two showing up? Well, a month ago, God gave me this rhema word, this revelation. I was sleeping and he just woke me just out of sleep, you know, just bam. And this is when, you know, I say this is spirituality 101. How do you know it's from God? When you're not thinking about something and it hits you. Um, and God speaks to you and he says, your daughter's birthday will be significant. Well, my daughter's birthday was February 20th, 2022. She just had a birthday. She's getting to be an old girl. And when I woke up the next morning, I was trying to figure out what the significance was until I wrote it down. And I, I got it wrote, written down underneath here on this board. And then everywhere else in the world, they put their, um, their dates different than we do in America. And somebody mentioned that to me. And they said, well, look at February 22nd and how it's written down. So if you write these words down or these numbers down, they come to this place where you can look at it front and back. And it's almost like God was saying that we've come to this place this week of this, you know, this, we're at the, we're at the climax. We're at the pivotal point. We're at a time. And I said, well, what does that mean, Lord? And he's like, everything's in balance right now. Everything is in balance. Which way are you going to live? Which way are you going to go? It's all hanging in the balance right now. And, you know, I, I think that you and I need to address this. So I go to the Church of Philadelphia, and I want to give this word to you. And it's found in um, uh, Revelation 3-7, Church of Philadelphia. And he says in verse 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, The words of the Holy One, the true one, who has the key of David. Now, we don't have the key of David. Jesus has the key. You remember he said to, to um, Peter in Matthew chapter 16, I believe it is 16, 18, where he said, I have the keys. And Peter, upon this rock, you shall um, build my kingdom. And, you know, and God has these keys for you and I to be able to do that. Our power, like it says in John chapter 15, he's the vine, we're the branches. Without the substance of the Lord, without him, we can do nothing, but through him, nothing is impossible to us. He holds the key. He has the authority. All authority lies in Jesus. 
He has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one will open. And he, then he goes on in verse 8, he says, I know your works, behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power. And I'm reading from the uh, English Standard Version. I hope that doesn't bother people, but I just, it's an easy read. And yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Behold, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you because you have kept the word of my patience, of my in patient endurance, which I believe comes to the where the Lord says, I'm long suffering that all should come to repentance. You've kept that word of God, which you've come to repentance. So this is a time when the church needs to clean up and come to repentance. He said, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. So it, the message here is that you and I need to come to this place in the midst of the trial in the midst of all that's going on right now, because there's a bigger trial coming upon the whole world when no one's going to be able to, able to escape it. But you and I have the ability right now. There is an open door. But you and I have to rest in him, in his power. And so what is interesting that where we pick this word up when we get into prophecies, you know, and patterns and principles, we pick this word up. Where's the other place where it says the key of David? And the only other place that it speaks of really is in Isaiah. Listen to this, Isaiah 2, or 22, 22. And I think it's very significant that God is saying that everything is in balance right now. Everything is hanging. There's, we're at a place of a, we're at a pinnacle point. And I think that what the Lord is saying to you and I is, is the story that is found in the Valley of Vision in Isaiah chapter 22, which goes right along with us today in Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, and on down to the Church of Philadelphia. They are, they, they're almost like, you know, cousins. They, they work together in the time that we're living. So the story in Isaiah chapter 22 is the fact that there's going to be some horrible events that are going to come. The enemy is going to come and it's going to come to the place where the leadership has either turned wicked or they decide there's nothing we can do. We're just going to die. I'm going to make a name for myself. And that's exactly what we're finding today. We're finding people wanting to make a name for themselves or they, or we find people that are turning over to do the, the deeds of the devil. And so it's really important for you and I to hang out with people that are not. And there are really good people in all walks of life, in every place, God has his remnant. So when we think about these evil leaders doing this, the Lord says, I'm, I'm watching. And there's this guy in the story that decides, you know, we're all going to die, but I'm going to make this monument, this memorial to myself. And he purchases on the people's taxes. He's taken the people's money that are paying him, the king's money, to make this memorial for himself. This, this um, granite stone that he's going to have cut out is going to cost so much money to make. So one day when everything's done, people walk by and say, oh, who is that guy? This guy's great. He wanted to be immortalized. And the Lord said, you know, you rotten scoundrel, you. This is not about you. This is about taking care of the people. This is about leadership, and you're not being a leader. You are playing to your own, you know, your own drum. So here we find then the Lord says, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to take that rock, and I'm going to crush it, that monument that you want to do, and I'm going to swing you around and throw you in a large field and be done with you. I'm going to replace you with my servant. And when my servant is put in that position, he's going to replace you. I'm going to give him the keys of David. I'm going to put my authority in him. And he's going to be like a fastened peg, that secure peg that cannot be removed. 
And I, and then he goes on, he says, and he will be able to open and no one, you know, will be able to close and he will shut. No one will be able to open. And it's interesting that we see that back in Isaiah chapter 22 in light of the events going on today. So the Lord Jesus Christ, when he's writing to the church of Philadelphia, he must have this in mind, that there's going to be a remnant of believers who have brotherly love, that love the Lord, love one another. And yet they find that they don't have much power. They don't have much, um, they're being censored. They, they can't speak. They, they, you know, they're being um, bombarded, you know, with, with just all kinds of stuff that just does not make sense. But the Lord speaks to us the same way he speaks, spoke to them during the time of Isaiah, when he was saying, I'm going to take care of these leaders that are practicing witchcraft, they're, they're sorcerers, they're doing their own thing, their, scheme, their schemes are of the devil. And there's others that are playing, you know, both sides, trying to make a name for themselves. And God said, I'm going to get rid of that that crowd, and I'm going to put my leadership in that place. And I believe that's what's going to happen. I believe that's what's in the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all that is happening. So what is the word for you and I today? What should you see? God doesn't give like Elohim that, that the Lord gave him the keys of David. We're the body of Christ. We have those keys. We have those keys today, but it's not ours. It's Jesus. But we are in Jesus. He's in us. And when we do his will and we walk in his power and his strength, we have those keys. We have an open door. So the question for the church today is how, how do we walk in that authority of the Lord? Well, he tells us right here back in Revelation chapter 3. He says to us, he says, um, he says, I know that you have little power. This is in verse 8. And yet you have kept my word. Number one, we've got to keep the word of God. You got to live and, and, and um, abide in the word of God. Jesus is the word. And you cannot deny his name. In other words, what I'm saying is you have to identify yourself first as a believer. And secondly, you're, as you stand up as a believer, you cannot... Um, say, well, I can live like I want to be, like I want to live, uh, in opposition to the word of God, and say that I identify with God. You can't. This is the shaking that's happening. This is what God's shaking loose. He's saying, I'm going to shake this stuff loose, because I want people today who are standing up on my name, identifying with me. My identity is as a believer first, foremost, not about politics, you know, and by the way, isn't it amazing how our world today is using the outward appearance of, of all of us as a means to divide us? When God never talked about our outward appearances, he always talked about the heart. Now, you need to, you need to concentrate on what I just said, and you need to think about that and study on that, because everything that's being utilized today that is causing division in the church, it's the outward, not the inward. Whether it be the dress you wear, the Bible you read, the, the songs you sing, the color of your skin, whatever it might be, the politics that you hold to, whatever it is, that's all outward. But it's the inward that we need to understand that God looks at, the inward heart. And so when we think about that, we can see this division happening and how many people are deceived today in the church. So it's important that you live unto the Lord, do his will. The Bible says when we delight in the ways of the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart, but we have to delight in him. We have to be wanting to do his, what he wants, what he does, what he desires, what his word says has to be in agreement with us. We need to not only say, I'll do it, but we need to be in love with that. Knowing that God's ways are perfect. We don't always understand it but we know he is perfect and we know that his plans are for us, not against us. And then I identify with him as a believer. Now, when we do those two things and, um, and we're, are, we're willing to, to repent when we've done wrong and move forward and, and just love one another with that brotherly love, I believe God's got an open door for all of us, no matter where you're at today, 
Hold on to that, and you have the keys of David. Guys, this message is very important for all of us to understand because we're living in evil times, and you know that. So let's love one another. Let's hold on to the word of God. Let's do the will of God. Let's get into the word of God. And um, if you've done something that you're, you know, you're holding some something sin in your life, you need to repent and move on. And uh, let's see God do something amazing in the church. Wake up, bride. There's good days ahead. Pray for Ukraine. Pray for, for America. Pray for our world. Pray that God will overcome evil with good. Until next time, may the Lord bless you richly. See you.